What is up, players? It's Warbots Tail of Mug. Welcome to a video showcasing my work on the AE World War II range. For the Soviets, these models are called Banshees, and uh, that's what they look like on the clamshell pack. You get two of them in there, and a couple of different options for heads. There's that gas mask one you saw on the cover. I decided to go with these ones because you can really see their faces. We want the audience, or the the, <laughs> the enemy across the table, to see that they are all females. And that I think their fluff is something like they've developed these psychic powers to amplify their voices. So they scream into these like neck-mounted microphones, and then it gets amplified through these speakers placed on their shoulders does horrible things to the enemy, I believe, is something of what their, what their characters are. I loved painting them. The trickiest thing about working with these models is that their joints are very small, so the shoulders, getting the arms to fit in. The lady on the right, you see that her she's holding a rifle, and you have to glue in her left arm and her right arm separately. So that was kind of tricky because the joints are not that well sculpted, so they don't slot in perfectly. You kind of have to hold them at the angle you want them to be in, and then with the other arm, hold that one up in place. These models are a little bit smaller. We'll put them here next to this Blood Angels Assault Marine. So you can see that they are thinner, they are smaller, the, the, the uh, sculpt, the um, the proportions are smaller than than a uh, heroic heroic range 28 millimeter model, but they do look very realistic. Everything is well proportioned. I think realistically, the heads and the hands are not cartoonishly over large like some of the Games Workshop models tend to be, and they they look great. So I painted them with this kind of khaki drab. Um, kind of fatigue look, fatigues, and the colors that I went with were Steel Legion Drab, shaded with Agrax Earthshade, and then highlighted back up, adding a little bit of Xandri Dust to uh, every single coat. I think I did three or four coats of highlights for the the um, uniform. The cape was done in Castellan Green, shaded down with Agrax Earthshade, and brought back up with Castellan Green, and then adding a little bit of Carrick Stone to kind of keep the same warm highlight tones. The skin, okay, this was a little bit different. I used Vallejo's range for doing the skin. Just wanted to try something a little bit different. I used uh, rose, I think rose flesh, which is a nice uh, dark red, kind of Bugman's Glow equivalent. And then I highlighted up with medium flesh tone and I think, was it dark flesh? Uh, or flat flesh tone? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm still wrapping my head around the uh, multitude of colors you get in the Vallejo range. The gun was, or the wood on the guns were done with, I believe it was XV88 as a base coat, shaded down with Agrax Earthshade and brought back up. The br uh, brown hair was done with Mornfang Brown, and then shaded down with Agrax Earthshade, brought back up with Mornfang Brown, adding a little bit of Carrick Stone. So as you can see, I added in Carrick Stone as, as most of my highlight colors because it really helps to unify the, the highlights and make them all kind of seem like they are uh, tied together in a very limited color palette. Which for these realistic and greedy looking models, I think works very well. You wouldn't want these girls to have like a shockingly pink uh, bandolier of pouches or, or anything that would distract so, beautiful models, had a lot of fun painting them. If you would like to see more, please uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you the starter force for the Soviets in the AE World War II range um, in a video that I'm going to be filming right now. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.